This is the final lesson in this unit of work. What I want you to do is have a look at the keywords on the next slide. Write down five questions about these different devices then pass them to a friend and we'll answer each other's questions. Remember the different parts of the operating system. You should know these well by now. Here's a quick recap of the different types of scheduling algorithms. Make sure you know all these, the keywords and what they are. This is the summary from last lesson. Remember we looked at different types of operating systems, including multitasking, multi-user, distributed operating systems, embedded and real time. Have a quick read through these and make any notes on anything you think you might have missed. We also looked at what was a BIOS and what was a device driver. Again, read through these, make sure you've got all the keywords and you understand the two different terms. So today we're looking at virtual machines, what they are, their functions and examples of them. So a virtual machine is basically a program that emulates the function of another computer or another machine on, but on its own hardware. You can think of this like old style arcade games. If you have a PS4, PS5, you can emulate games from old computers or from the PC onto your device. That's because it uses what's called an emulator or a virtual machine, which gives the feel that you're in that old type of hardware and you're running different types of hardware, but actually you're not. It's running that the software on your new hardware. You can also get virtual servers as well. So a virtual server makes you think that you're working on that company or the school's networks. So you can do everything that you would normally do um, on that computer, including email, printing and file. You might have file servers where all the school files are saved. This is a virtual server. You're not actually on that computer, but you're accessing those files, the same as printers and emails. Now, one of the main ways that a virtual machine works is that through using something called intermediate code. This can be called byte code. And for an example, I want to talk to you about Java. Now, Java is a massively successful programming language, and that's because it can run on multiple different platforms. If you're using a programming uh, language, quite often you're going to have to compile or interpret the code so it works on that device. That might mean turning it into an executable file. Or it might mean having a small program so that it can compiles it when it arrives at your computer. However, Java actually has a bit of a workaround with this. It converts its language into what we call bytecode, which is like an intermediary code, an intermediate code. This can then be translated by what's called a Java virtual machine, which is found on the device. Uh, it converts it into machine code that the computer can understand directly. And this is why Java is so popular. Another example of using a virtual machine would be to create and test a system. If we're running a system, we want to be careful that it's not going to damage our hardware or damage our current system. We can test for malware or early versions of software to make sure that they are safe and secure and are not going to be damaging our current PCs and machines. So the hardware only exists in the virtual machine. It's like a self-contained program, self-contained software program running on your computer uh, from actually from a different host. Here's our summary. A virtual machine is a program which provides the same functionality as the machine it's running on, but on its native hardware. It's actually running in your computer uh, using your hardware, even though it might seem like it's using an older or a different system. We have lots of examples of these, such as games, operating systems, virtual servers and intermediate code. There is a quick hoop for you to try and to test your knowledge. Next lesson is the test. So the last task is for you to go back to your PLCs, decide what your strengths and weaknesses are and create a revision resource. You might find this keyword wall useful. Make sure you know all of these key terms uh, in preparation for your exam.